All right, so these will be our last examples on L'Hopital's rule. There are three remaining indeterminate forms. Um, zero to the power of zero, right? Uh, first, it seems sort of harmless, but if you think about it, we know that, I mean, zero, zero raised to any power other than zero should give us zero, but we know that any other number raised to the power of zero should give us one, right? Um, so we have two functions, and remember that you know we have a function to the power of a function, right? And one of them is approaching zero, the other is, you know, they're both approaching zero, right? And so there's kind of fighting. Should this limit be zero? Should it be one? Somewhere in between? Um, tough to say, right? One to the power of infinity. Well, one raised to any power is just one. But if you have a function that's close to one, then it's not quite one, right? And so that little difference, like we see here, right? We have one plus a little bit, right? If x is really big, this is a tiny number, right? But one plus a tiny number, maybe that tiny bit, once we raise it to a really large power, is enough to actually um, generate something there, right? Um, similarly, infinity to the zero, you know, infinity raised to power, you know, should get us something, but zero, well, you know, if negative power, we should get zero, right? Positive power, we should get infinity. Zero is kind of on that cusp, right? Anything below zero, we get zero for the limit. Above zero, we get infinity. Maybe the right answer is somewhere in between. There's a key technique that deals with all of these, okay? Which is that if I have f of x to the power g of x, right, I can always write this as e to the, well, to the log of f of x raised to the power of g of x, but remember, if we have an exponent, we can bring it in front, okay? And so if we want to take the limit of this, it's the same as taking the limit of that. And because the exponential function is continuous, we can bring the limit up into the exponent, right? So rather than taking the limit of f of x to the g of x, right, what we should do is we should consider we should consider the limit x approaching, well, whatever value we're interested in, of g of x times the log of f of x. Okay? And if you think about the various scenarios here, right, um, if, if f of x is, is approaching 0, um, then log of f of x is approaching minus infinity. So this is now a 0 times infinity limit, right? Um, if f of x is approaching 1, then log of 1 is 0, right? Um, and if g of x is approaching infinity, well, again, infinity times 0, right? Okay, similar idea here. f of x is approaching infinity, log of f of x is approaching infinity, g of x is approaching 0, right? So basically, all of these limits turn into this type of limit um, through this procedure. So let's see how this turns out in practice with a couple of examples, okay? So with this first one, we can say that this is the same as the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x log 1 plus 1 over x, okay? And we can bring that limit up into the exponent. So now we should consider the limit as x goes to infinity of x times the log of 1 plus 1 over x, okay? And this is indeed an infinity times 0 limit. So we should rewrite it, and I'm going to rewrite it like this. I'm going to leave the log there, and instead of multiplying by x, I'm going to divide by 1 over x. Okay, and this is now a 0 over 0 limit, so L'Hopital's rule applies. So by L'Hopital's rule, this is going to be the limit x going to infinity. So the derivative of the top, I get 1 over 1 plus 1 over x times the derivative of 1 plus 1 over x which is minus 1 over x squared. There's the derivative of the top. 
the derivative of the bottom is minus 1 over, over x squared. And again, we get a nice cancellation. That leaves us just the limit of this, right? But if x is going to infinity, 1 over x is going to go to 0. So this is just 1 over 1 plus 0. This limit is going to come out to be 1, okay? And so this is simply going to be e to the limit of that. We just did that limit. We get e to the 1. So we get e. All right, there we go. This limit is e. Uh, in fact, you'll occasionally see books give this as a definition for the value of e. They'll say e is the number um, given by this limit. Why not? OK. Coming over to this one here, this is clearly 0 to the 0 form, right? x is going to 0. We've got x to the power x. So we want to rewrite this as the limit x going to 0 from the right of e to the x log x. OK. And so this is the same as e to the limit x going to 0 from the right of x log x. OK. So now we have to take that limit, right? And so this is now a 0 times infinity limit. And we've got to think about how to tackle that using L'Hopital's rule. So we could say that the limit x going to 0 from the right of x log x. Well, there's two ways we could rewrite it, right? Um, we could have, keep x on the top and do 1 over log x on the bottom, but that's, that's not going to be a nice derivative. I think it's probably easier to keep log x on top, put a 1 over x on the bottom. This is now what kind of limit do we have? Infinity over infinity. Well, that means L'Hopital's rule applies. x goes to 0 from the right. So the derivative of log x is 1 over x. The derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. If I multiply top and bottom by x squared, Right, so, or minus x squared. So minus x squared times 1 over x gives me minus x, and on the bottom I'll just get 1. Okay, that limit is 0, right? So this gives me e to the 0, and of course e to the 0 is 1, and we're done.